in the book of Acts, chapter 7. And I want to read a couple of verses of scripture beginning in verse 55. But he being full of the Holy Ghost, thank God for the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Oh, hallelujah. And then we want to read to you out of the book of Esther. We're going to be in chapter 4. And we want to begin reading in verse 14. Book of Esther, chapter 4. And we'll begin reading in verse 14. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. And thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther bade them return Mordecai on this answer. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan. And fast ye for me. Neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. And we want to use this tonight, and with the help of the Lord, we want to preach about standing for the Lord. Thank God we can stand for the Lord. Amen and, and amen. He helps us to stand, doesn't he? Amen, he does. He's our strength. He is the one that enables you and I. And his grace is sufficient. Yes. He's got more than enough power to help us to face anything that we will ever face in our lives. Yes. And he is faithful. Yes. Amen. We ask his blessing tonight. And Brother Collins, we ask the Lord's blessing uh, upon the message and service. And you just pray for Reverend Cope. Father God, we thank you that we can spend this time together with you, learning, God, and, and growing. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would bless Pastor Pope now as he ministers your word. Give him clarity of, of thought and mind, God. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, helping Reverend Coker through the, the procedure today, God. And we ask for your continued uh, healing upon him, Lord, and, and the others, Lord, in, in church, God. Just a special touch for all, Lord. And, I pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus Amen. Name. Amen. Thank God. Thank God for a special touch. A special touch. Oh, we get these oh, blessings from the Lord, don't we? Yes. Have the privilege of feeling the presence of the Lord yes. in our lives. What a wonderful thing. Yes, when he touches us and heals us, that's a wonderful thing. But just, just regularly when God lets us know and blesses us, with the pre his presence, and we know that God is with us. We feel his presence amongst us. Not that we always go by feelings, because we know that he'll never leave us, nor forsake us. Amen. But a wonderful thing it is when we feel that precious, special touch oh, yes. of Jesus. Yes. Truly, the yes. Holy Spirit is a comforter. Man, and he comforts yes. us, and yes. he, he really lets us know, I'm with you, and everything's going to be okay. Yes. Amen. I know what you're I know what's going on in your life. I've not forgotten about you. Okay, I, I am here with you, and I'm going to take care of you. Thank God the Lord takes care of us. Amen. Well, we read about a couple of people who, who experienced God taking care of them. Amen? God was with them, and we, we look at uh, maybe what they went through, and, and uh, we have these two examples that we read out of the Bible uh, this evening. Okay, this... This man and this woman, different time periods, one in the New Testament, in the church age, the other, okay, uh, back in the, when they were captive uh, in, in there in, in Shushan, okay, uh, two different time periods, same God, thank God, God doesn't change, Amen. God took care of one, God took care of the other, God takes care of you and I. Yeah. But we began to look at what they were facing and the opposition that they stood in. They stood against opposition, brother and sister. You know, 
uh, we, we look at our, our nation and uh, we, we say things like, and, and you know, hear people talking about, oh man, things are really getting bad and, and oh, things are really getting bad in the world. You go read about what was happening during the times that we read about in our Bible setting. Oh, my. Brother, sister, things were a lot worse. Yeah. Okay, and in the, in the fact that, for example, with this man that we're going to uh, preach a little bit about, first of all, by this man by the name of Stephen, the church was very young. There were not churches all over the place. There were very few Christians. You want to talk about somebody making a stand against uh, a lot of opposition and it wasn't like there were churches on every corner like we see in our nation or in every town. You know, you have multiple churches, different kinds of churches, uh, many people that claim to be Christians. It was not that way during the time of the life of Stephen. Amen. On the contrary, there were very few people that were Christians. Yes, there may have been thousands that got saved, but, you know, there are churches today that have thousands of people in them. Okay, there, uh, you know, in, in Tucson, there are no doubt thousands of Christians in Tucson, but this man lived in a world where there were relatively, compared to how many people were there and, uh, in the nation of Israel, even there, brother and sister, very few of them were believers, and they had to make a stand during their life against great opposition. And we look at the opposition that this man went through. It wasn't just somebody, oh, you're weird, you're a Christian, you're intolerant, you're a bigot. You're a homophobe, and you're this and that, and the other thing, and you're backwards, and and uh, you don't believe in science and all of this. It wasn't just things like that. You read about this man, brother, sister. Uh, other people had been been uh, uh, persecuted, and this man, his life was taken because he believed and preached the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so it wasn't just it wasn't just the peer pressure. It wasn't just maybe some pressure from family members or some pressure in society to buckle under what society said was acceptable, but this man literally lost his life because he believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And there have been many throughout uh, the church and, and even before the church. You know, the, the, Anyone who has followed God and, and throughout uh, human history, there we could even go all the way back to Cain and Abel. Why was it that Abel lost his life? But sister, because he made a stand for God and what God wanted him to do in his life, and it caused his own brother to be jealous mm -hmm. and to hate him and to, and to take his life from him, brother and sister. So we have, you know, throughout human history, we see people standing against opposition. But regardless of the odds, brother and sister, that seem to be against people, God and these people. Uh, even though this man lost his life, brother and sister, he saw the Lord standing at the right hand of God the Father. He was ushered into the presence of the Lord before they hauled his body away. He was already with Jesus, brother and sister. Amen. And has been with him since then. Okay, so it wasn't something that was, though it was uh, uh, a, a, a very uh, hard situation for him to go through, no doubt. But if we read the account, the Bible does not show him being re uh, uh, crying and being remorseful and crying out to God, Oh, God, save me, help me. No, brother and sister, he, he beheld the face of the Lord. He looked upon him steadfastly, and his reaction to what they were doing to him was a testimony to those people and to the man who wrote uh, uh uh, a lot of the New Testament, the Apostle Paul, as he witnessed this man's this man's reaction to the persecution that he was facing. Okay, though he was going through something hard, brother sister, he wasn't distraught. He wasn't uh, uh, faithless. He wasn't angry. Okay, matter of fact, he was just like Jesus. He asked the Lord not to lay this sin to their church. Yes. They saw Christ in this man's life. Amen. Though yes. he was, though he was going through this persecution and him taking his life, brother and sister, he made a stand for the Lord, and because of it, some people, some people were witnessed to, and we know that the apostle Paul got saved. 
Now you, I've shared my testimony with you, how there was a man that was nice to me, though I was mean to him, okay? Though we were in an adverse situation, the man had the joy of the Lord. We've recently preached, brother and sister, how that we are to show Christ to men and women, amen? And we are to show the Lord in our lives, amen. showing Christ in our lives. This man showed Christ. Someone got saved. That man became a great apostle for the Lord. You and I can show Jesus, brother and sister. And you know what? People will get saved. Yes. God will yes. save people, yes. brother and sister. God will witness to people through our lives if we are willing to make a stand for the Lord. Okay, let's go on now to our second example. We have this example of this woman, Esther, a young woman. Okay, she was there, and God gave her favor. God gives us favor. Thank God for the favor that God gives us. Well, not only was she enslaved, but all of her, her people were enslaved there in Persia. And God raised her up from being a slave, and she became the queen. She became the wife of the king of Persia. Man, can you imagine that? Going from being a slave to being the wife of the king? Brothers and sisters, thank God. You know, we we were we were enslaved to sin, but we have been made kings and yes. priests unto God. Amen? Amen. God has Amen. taken us from being, being paupers, from being servants to sin, and God has made us more than conquerors through him who loved us. Amen? It's what he did for her. He raised her up, brother and sister, and God uh, uh, exalted her. We know that Haman wanted the Jews to be destroyed. The decree was made. It was in the process of being carried out, and she was told uh, by her uncle to go before the king on behalf of her people and to let him know what was going on. And we know that the consequences for going before the king would be a, 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 a death sentence. You didn't just pop in there and, hey, what's up, king? What's going on? Can I have one of them chicken legs you got over there? Let's sit down and talk about something. No, it didn't work that way. You had to be summoned. Okay? He had to hold his scepter out and give you favor, and you could come into the presence of the king. Well, she was going to go before him anyway. No, she was not summoned. Brother and sister, she was going to make a stand for her people, and she had been given such a testimony. Now, you, there's no doubt there were other women that were physically beautiful in Persia and all of this man's yes. kingdom, but there was something about her. She had more than just a natural beauty. She had the beauty of holiness upon her life. The, the beauty of God shone through this woman's life, and, and God gave her favor with this man, Brother and sister, her life spoke to him. Brother and sister, he was willing to give her whatever she asked for to have of his kingdom. Brother and sister, she would go and stand before the king. And I like the attitude that she had. She said, if I die, I die. It just doesn't matter. I'm going to die doing what God needs me and wants me to do. I'm going to die making a stand for the Lord. Just like Stephen would do later on. He died making a stand for the Lord. But she didn't die, but she was ready to, brother and sister. If I die, I die. I'm going to die doing what God wants me to do. Well, we're getting older, aren't we? If, we're, if the Lord turns, we're going to die. But we're going to die doing what the Lord wants us to do. Amen. We don't have to be afraid, brother and sister. You know, if you don't serve God, you're going to die anyway. That's true. <laughs> Die with the Lord that rather than without. Okay? She was not afraid, brother and sister. She made a stand, and she uh, was told by her uncle, or how do you know that you haven't been, uh, that, that thou art, whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. God raised you up for this purpose. Church, God has raised us up for the purpose of making a stand during our lifetime. In our generation, our time frame of life that God has given us. God is the one that has given us a span of life. He allowed us to be born at a certain time in, in history. Okay, he, he made a way for us to be saved. He's the one that worked all of that out. 
He saved us. He has us here in Tucson Amen. at this time for such a time as this. God knows exactly what's going on. Brother and sister, he has a plan. He has a plan for us as a church, for us as individuals. Brother and sister, let's realize I'm not just here spinning my wheels. I'm in the plan and the will of God. Okay? All right. Let me do what God yes. wants me to do. Let me make a stand for the Lord at this time in my life. Whatever yes. that it is that God has me here to do, let me do it. She did it, brother and sister, and her people were spared. The enemy was destroyed. Thank God, brother and sister, we can make a stand in our lives and God can absolutely destroy the works of the enemy, and not only in, in our lives, our families, but in the lives of others, brother and sister, that, that see the stand that we make. Yes. You know, you never know. You never know. I, uh, you know, I, I understand that this is a small church, but you don't know who you are affecting, my friend. That's right. We don't know who yes. it is. You may not yes. see it. You know, we 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 pastor churches in a bunch of different places. And I've had people call me, uh, we may have been gone somewhere for a couple of years and leave a place and that person gets out of the military and goes home and 10 years later they give you a phone call and they say, I thank you for what you taught us. I thank you for the standing you made because I finally got saved. Thank you. And I'm going to church in my home and I'm a, I'm a real Christian now. It may take a while, brother and sister, but God is working in the lives of men and women. God is working on them. You never know, brother and sister. You know, we've had a lot of people do that. There's been several that, that have called and, you know, we're in somewhere else now and, and it may not uh, uh, have a lot of contact with them. And they'll call and say, you know, I'm serving God still. I just want to let you know. That that that, uh, and we're not trying to uh, prop ourselves up. That's not the point of what we're saying. Your life has an effect on people. Just because it doesn't happen immediately, don't get discouraged. Keep making a stand for the Lord in your life. You never know, my friend, what's going on in somebody's heart and somebody's mind. They may be that close, brother, sister, and just to surrendering to God. And just giving their life wholly to the Lord and his plan for their life. Continue to love them. Continue to show them an example. Continue to stand for God in your life. Thank God we can do that, brother and sister. You know, one man waters, one man plants, another man waters. And oh, thank God, God gives the increase. He gives the increase, brother and sister. He gives the increase. Yes. Thank God. You know, we can pray that God oh, will God. continue to give, give the increase. I'm getting ready to close here in just a moment, ma'am. If you want to prepare and come on up, okay? Listen to this. Brother and sister, we can make a stand in our lives. We can choose. I like what Joshua told the children of Israel. We know that he made a stand in his life, didn't he? He was Moses' servant and his minister, and he... he uh, was there to help Moses, but there came a time that after Moses died, God looked to him to step up and to lead his people, okay? And God helped him, and God was with him, gave him victory. They went into the promised land. We could maybe think about Jericho, and I know that everything wasn't perfect, and there may have been uh, some issues with, with uh, a couple of things, brother and sister, but as long as they trusted God, as long as they were willing oh, yes. to go forward and make a stand for the Lord, yes. God yes. gave them victory yes. over their enemy. Yes. This man who was getting ready to, his life was ending, brother and sister, and maybe not in the same exact words, but he could say, as much later the Apostle Paul would say, I have fought a good fight. I have yes. kept the faith. I have finished the course, brother and sister. Thank God we can finish. God has started it. He can help us. It can be finished in our lives. We can fight the good fight of faith. Joshua did. He, he served the Lord. He said,
said to the children of Israel, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served, were on the, which are on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Yes. I've served yes. the Lord all this time already. I may be getting old and getting ready to leave this life, but me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Yes. We're not turning back now. You know, you've been saved one second. You've been saved too long to go back. You tasted that the Lord is good. Yes. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Why don't we just lift our hands and worship him tonight. Lord, we love you. We thank you tonight. Thank you for making a stand for us, Jesus. You gave your life upon the cross for our sin. You took our place in judgment. You rose from the dead. You are alive. God, we look to you right now. Help us to stand. And after having done all to stand, can we come and find a place to pray. God bless you tonight is our prayer. Thank you, Jesus.